we offer this Mass for the intentions of Jacqueline Dinter, for the eternal repose of all the souls in purgatory, and for the motivation to practice charity. And we pray for the eternal repose of the soul of Joseph Hansen Lawas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most wicked fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Heaven, Virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts will be fixed on that place where your bloodness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Revelation. Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take it and eat it. It will be bitter to your stomach but sweet as honey in your mouth. So I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. Then the angel said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How sweet to my taste is your promise. How sweet to my taste is your promise. I delight in the way of, the, of your decrees as much as in all riches. Your decrees are my delight, they are my consolation. How sweet to my taste is your promise. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Your, de your decrees are my heritage for, forever. They are the joy of my heart. With open mouth I can, because I long for your commandments. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sheep listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there. And he said, 
It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching in the temple. The chief priest, the scribes, and the leaders of the people kept looking for a way to kill him. But they did not find anything he could do, for all the people were stunned by what they heard. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, my friends. On our first, in our first reading today, it speaks about the taste of the scroll. One taste is bitter to your stomach, and the other described as sweet as honey in one's mouth. And I think it is good to ask today, what is sweet in the Word of God? And what is bitter in the Word of God? You know, the first reading is trying to remind us this morning that God's Word is sweet when we follow His words. It is sweet if we take delight in all His decrees. As what our responsorial son is telling us today, God's Word is better than thousand of gold and silver pieces. How then to make the word of God sweet? Like the response here and some, we have to fulfill our promises. Every time you attend Mass in the morning, Every time you open your Bible or encounter any Bible verse, how do you find the Word of God? How do you find the scroll? Is it sweet as honey or as sour as vinegar or you find it bitter? You know, the Word of God is sweet. When what He promised is Fulfill. The word of God is sweet when there is a fulfillment of what He promises to us. And fulfillment of God's promises is what makes the word of God sweet. And you know, human experience as we have, when someone promises you and that promise will fulfill, of course, it will give smile to your face, right? And the Word of God, the fulfillment of God's promises, that what makes it sweet. Now, what the Gospel is trying to teach us today? Here, in the Gospel it says, Jesus is driving out money changers out of the temple area. Why? Because this is what Jesus said, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Den of robbers. He was upset because the temple was used as a place or a venue for, for commerce, commerce, trade. The temple became a venue for business. The temple was desecrated because of greediness and dishonesty. When you go to the temple before, before you, the, the temple is the place where people flock, you know, people everywhere. And even, even here, the church is just a meeting place of people. And when there's people, there is business, you know. Now, this is the context. When you go to the temple before, you have to bring your, your offering, your gifts. Of course, when you bring your gifts, it composed of fruits of the land, you know, your animals, and some monetary things. But, but most of the time, 
it is like you know animals when poor people will offer their gifts or when poor people will offer their offerings before you reach the temple there are some people who will check who will check if your offerings are fit or not but of course you know that your offering is the best offering because you have to offer what is best for God. Jesus, he said, you make the house of God, like the temple, the den of robbers, because there are so much corruption and dishonesty happening in outside the temple. What's the corruption? Money changers. Of course, when you go to the temple, sometimes, or most of the time, during this time, their time, the money changers will manipulate, okay? that's the term, manipulate the, the worshippers by telling them that their gifts, their offerings are not acceptable. They will manipulate worshippers that their offerings are not fit offering. Hence, they're going to have like we call barter or they have to trade, exchange product and they will say, this one is the best offering and the Lord will be happy of it. Imagine yourself like this one, you go to the temple and you're bringing your sheep and you offer the sheep of course that's the best one but we, before you reach the temple there are people who will check and those people who will check they are the one who will manipulate you they will convince you that your offering it's not good it's not fit and they will exchange it they will trade it with what they have that what makes jesus so upset there is corruption there is dishonesty. There is so much mass, uh, manipulation, extortion that's happening. Of course, out of your ignorance, you will believe. Because, you know, when you are, like, for example, when you go to the city and you live in, you know, in a rural, a rural area, it seems that you will be, ah, you will be amazed because you are new. And that's what these money changers are taking advantage of. What's the message of today's gospel for us, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters? You know, today God is teaching us with this lesson. God is disappointed. God is not happy. God is upset with people who will make use of the church as an avenue to gain or to raise funds for selfish motives. Will you use the temple to raise funds because of greed and selfish intentions? God is not happy with dishonest people. God is disappointed with people who do crooked things, who will use others just for themselves. That's why he overturned tables. He was so upset. Today, it's a good reminder for all of us that the church is not a marketplace. Therefore, do not make it a den of robbers. When there is so much dishonesty, it's better to overturn table. Three challenges that I'm going to leave this morning. The invitation is this. Let us make our church let us make the temple worthy 
a worthy place for worship and prayer. Let us make our church a place fit for prayer, not for business. And how to make the church a fitting place and venue for worship and prayer? Number one, maintain silence. Maintain silence. And the best way nowadays, the best way to maintain silence is this. One, turn off mobile phones when you are in the church. Avoid loud chats and useless conversations. Maintain silence. That's one way of making the house of God fit and worthy place for worship. Second, this is just a suggestion. When you go to the church to maintain its sanctity, to observe reverence in the church, dress properly. When you go to the church, observe modesty. This is what I always told people outside. The church is not a shopping mall. The church is not a marketplace. This is not a perfect place for date. You're not going to go to dance in the church. You're not going to go for trouble when you go to the church. Therefore, to respect its sanctity, dress properly and observe modesty. When we were child, we were told by our parents, every time you go to the church, wear your Sunday's, Sunday best, your best, because it's the temple. And finally, just a suggestion. Today, we are reminded, do not mix religion and business. Do not mix religion and business. If we wish to trade business, do it in commercial places. The church is not a perfect venue for doing trade and business. Today, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, two things that I would like to remind. First, God is disappointed with people who make use of the church as an avenue to gain or to raise funds for personal motives. God is not pleased and happy with people who are crooked and dishonest. When you use other people because of their ignorance to raise, you know, for your personal motivation and desire, that is no, 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 no. And that will make the word of God bitter and sour. Today, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, let us make the house of God a worthy place for worship and prayer, and let us avoid it as a den of robbers. Amen. The commands of the Lord are clear, but His mercy is great. Let us pray to our Father with trust in His wisdom. And in every petition, let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let the Catholic Church be guide her members in the path of righteousness and bring them closer to God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord that we may learn to turn away from sin with all our hearts, remaining obedient to God's law. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those who do not believe 
may yet hear the word of God and be brought to eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That we may never neglect the sick, the old, the lonely, and all who suffer in their in, in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That the faithful departed may enjoy eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We now bow our heads and close our eyes and in silence we present to the Lord our personal concerns and intentions. Heavenly Father, you search the heart of every man, and you know our innermost thoughts. Strengthen our hearts for true worship, and our hands for more willing service to others, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. O Lord, who gave for yourself a people by adoption to the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the fires of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Misery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have preached you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins and on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Yes, thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer against coronavirus. Almighty and merciful Father, we thank you for the life that is your gift, for the providence that sustains us, and for your wisdom that direct the course of our days. Forgive our sins against your love, against each other, and against your creations. The threat of an infection of coronavirus is upon us today. This disease causes fear among us and has claimed some life. We humbly beg your loving Father to deliver us from this and other diseases, heal those who are afflicted, and stop the spread of the virus. Strengthen us in charity to care for each other. We ask this, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The house of God, the temple of God, is the house of the temple is the house of God. Let us always make it and maintain the reverence and sanctity and always make it a proper place, a proper venue for worship and prayer. The Lord be with you. To be here, to be here. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you, God.